A Night in the Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny October 15th Continuing gray and drizzling, I made my rounds and got out early to check about the house. I'd gotten out several times during the night to move things a little further along. I was bone weary that morning, and Needle came by at dawn. He was out again with his crossbow crew, he responded. I'm not sure how many there are, but I can show you where one lives. Later, I said, I'm very busy. All right, he replied. Show you this evening, if we're both free. Any word on the police? Police? What about? Never mind. I'll tell you when I see you later, unless someone else does it first. Till then, he said, and he darted off. I went and dragged the corpse till I couldn't manage another step. Then I dragged myself home. Jaws aching, paws sore, and my old injury from the zombie affair acting up. While I was resting under the tree, Greymalt came by. How's it going? she asked. Pretty fair, I answered. I still have a long way to go, but he's stashed safe enough. I saw, I saw the horse go by. I gathered you took care of things. Yes, Quicklime was very cooperative. You should have seen his routine. The horse was quite impressed. Good. Has anyone seen it? Yes, I watched the constable's place earlier. An inspector was by there from the city. So were the great detective and his companion whose wrist was bandaged. Poor fellow, did they stay long? Not the inspector, but the detective stayed to visit the vicar and several others. Oh my, I wonder what he told them. I wasn't in a position to hear, but the detective did considerable strolling about the neighborhood afterwards. They even went somewhat afield toward the good doctor's place. Didn't go off in the count's direction, did they? No. They stopped and asked Owen about beekeeping, though. A pretext, of course, and I was near when they noted the arrow stuck in the side of your house. Damn, I said. Forgot. Have to do something about them. I have to go bury some things now, she said. I'll try to talk to you again later. Yes, I have some work to do, too. I made my rounds again, then went off to drag the inspector a little farther along. Having done it both ways, they're easier when they're stiff than when they're limp, and he was limp again. Evening. Jack wanted to go out again. When it gets to this point in the game, there are always a few last-minute items on the shopping list. This time, the place was swarming with patrolmen, some of them walking in pairs. Crazy Jill swooshed by at one point, turning a few heads, though through the open door of a gin mill I saw Rastov seated at a table, alone, save for a bottle of vodka and a glass. I wondered what happened to Quicklime on these occasions, if he's gone internal. A rat resembling Bupo scurried by, a finger in his mouth. Owen went staggering past with a pair of fellows, faces streaked with coal dust, singing something incomprehensible in Welsh. I saw Morris, bewigged, dressed like a woman, heavily rouged, holding on to McCab's arm. Party time, Jack observed, before things start to get serious. An eye-patched man with shaggy hair, a terrible limp, and a withered hand staggered by, selling pencils from a tin cup. I went on point, even before he emerged from the fog, recognizing from the scent that it was the great detective in disguise. Jack bought a pencil from him and paid him handsomely for it. He muttered a, Bless you, governor, and limped off. Our quest was extremely difficult this time, and I must say the master took unusual chances. As we were fleeing, a number of patrolmen in pursuit. Whistles ablaze, a door opened to our left, and a familiar voice said, In here! We ducked inside. The door was closed softly behind us, and moments later I heard police rush past. Thanks, I heard Jack whisper. Glad to be of a, able to help, Larry replied. Everybody seems to be out tonight. It's getting to be that time, Jack said. 
and his parcel began to drip softly. I've a towel here that you can have, Larry said. Thank you. How do you know it might be needed? I have a way with of anticipating things, Larry replied. He did not accompany us back this time, and I excused myself shortly after the bridge to return to the corpse and drag it farther. Something had gotten to it and stolen a few nibbles, but I was still but it was still largely intact. As I was struggling along, I thought I heard Grey Malk voice a greeting from somewhere overhead, but my mouth was full and I did not want to stop work to look up. A Night in the Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny October 15th. <laughs>